let's turn our attentions to the international papers. Diptyka Laurent is back with us in studio. Uh, Diptyka, internationally, a lot of attention being given to this uh, Congress in China. It happens twice a decade. That's right. We're looking at the Chinese press this morning. It's a milestone in China's progress. That's what the Shanghai Daily says on its front page. The party is preparing to elect new members and set its course for the future. The China Daily, also a pro-government paper, is just as excited and optimistic about China's future. The past five years under Xi Jinping have been extraordinary, the paper says. The government made historic achievements in reforms and the momentum will be sustained over the coming years the China Daily says in quite a giddy editorial, it must be said. Now, one paper, the Global Times, has a message for the West in its editorial. Well, it's a really interesting uh, editorial from the Global Times because they argue that this Congress is an important chance for the outside world to further or better understand the inner workings of the Chinese Communist Party because the paper reminds us that the CPC has 89 million members. That's more than the entire population of Germany. Uh, I quote, it's not a loose-knit interest group revolving around elections like a party in the West, but the blood and bones of China. Now, now, what's interesting is that a uh, contributor for, the, for Forbes magazine has flouted the idea of dropping the word communist from the title of the party altogether. The writer says if China is the world's second largest economy today, it's due to, I quote, a dose of decentralization and incentives introduced into the communist system that's unleashed people's animal spirits for wealth creation. Okay, I'm curious as to the background of that Forbes contributor, but let's move on to another topic <laughs> now, Diptyka. The Syrian Democratic Forces are claiming to have retaken Raqqa entirely, a significant and a symbolic win. Uh, definitely a symbolic win uh, against the Islamic State group. In fact, one of the last places to fall in Raqqa was central Raqqa, which the Emirati paper, The National, says came to symbolize the most brutal aspects of the jihadists' rule, like public executions, as one of the witnesses in this article talks about. But it's not the end of the jihadists in any way. That's what The New Yorker argues in this article, saying while it marks the symbolic demise of the IS group and will hamper their desires to carry out future attacks, to finance themselves, to recruit. The organization is not dead because, first of all, you have hundreds of fighters who are still sort of languishing in lawless areas between Syria and Iraq, not to mention those who are radicalized and returning back to the West. So the New Yorker is really warning us that the Syrian quagmire is far from over, and from this chaos, other manifestations of extremism could, be, could breed, so we have to be careful. Okay. Um, meanwhile, a New York Times journalist was actually embedded with the Syrian Democratic Forces for some 10 days of that battle to retake Raqqa. Ivor Prickett, he's a journalist. He's been publishing some of the photos he took during uh, his experience being with the Syrian Democratic Forces in the past weeks and months. And it's quite harrowing the four-month-long battle to retake Raqqa, he says, left behind a ghost city and brought Raqqa that's been inhabited since antiquity to destruction, as you see from the photos here, uh, pictures. Uh, this one is a picture of a sniper. And there is the ruins of the city after yeah. months of battle. Those symbols of how life was before, the regular life we all can recognise. Um, uh, staying with press photography, but onto a different topic, the winners of the Wildlife uh, Photography Awards have been named. Well, the Wildlife photograph uh, Photographer of the Year is Brent Sturton. And uh, let me warn you, this picture is very harrowing. It's very, uh, very daunting. Uh, it's a murdered black rhino with, its, with his, its horn hacked off at a South African game park. It's difficult to look at, but it is also a very stark reality. Uh, species are being wiped out due to uh, poaching. In particular, rhinos uh, are killed for their horns because they're believed to hold magical medical powers. So this photo, a reminder once again of what humans are doing uh, to animal species around the world, being pushing them to the brink of extinction. Some other award-winning pictures for you. Uh, Toti, the chimpanzee, enjoying a rest in his canopy in Uganda. That's a much more palatable photo, I think. And this one of a seahorse carrying a Q-tip. This is actually the one I really love. It is a beautiful picture. It's, it's kind a, of depressing. Yeah, it is well. depressing. It, the picture itself is beautiful, but it is. <laughs> it does have a depressing message about the dangers of plastic pollution and how it's killing our ma marine life. Absolutely. Um, finally, did you get an unlikely romance is what's got your eye for the last four. That's article. right. <laughs> this story has actually been compared to Coming to America. You remember the film with Eddie Murphy where he... Uh, 
poses as where well, he pretends uh, to be a normal person, whereas he's an African prince. Well, Joel McConnell was a plain clothed Ethiopian prince hanging out in a Washington nightclub when he tried to and, and ended up picking uh, picking up his future wife Ariana Austin, albeit with a cheesy pickup line. He says he told her and her friend that they looked like an ad for Bombay Sapphire. Well, apparently that pickup line worked, and the two got married in Maryland last month. Makinen is actually a relative of Haile Selassie I, the last Ethiopian emperor. As they say, love strikes you when you least expect it, even in a Washington nightclub. I have to say, I quite like that story. Thanks for that, Dutika Laurent, with the International Papers.